Hello everyone. So in this video, today we'll see that what are the different type of MCQ questions that we all might get in this particular chapter of AP according to the new syllabus. As now there is one more thing. Now there are a few techniques that we all need to follow when we are answering any MCQ question. Okay. So we'll see those as well while solving or discussing the MCQ questions. Those who are new to this channel, do subscribe to the channel so that you all keep getting the uh, videos on all the topics of the bifurcated syllabus. Okay, so let's see one by one what are the different type of questions that we can have in this chapter. So let's start first with question number one. Now, if you see here, then it's it's asking us that the tenth term of from the end of this particular AP they are asking. So tenth term from the end they are asking. So in that case, you just Imagine the particular series from backwards. Okay, so if I imagine this particular sequence from backwards, then obviously then my first term is going to be minus 1000, isn't it? And since as we can observe here that in this particular form, like if I see from front to back, then you can see that the difference between any two terms, every term is basically minus 5 of the previous. So basically every term is 5 less than the previous one. So that means if we go in backward, then every term will be 5 more than the next term, right? So that means my common difference is plus 5 in that case. So that means my next term will be minus 995 if I think in that way, right? And they're asking the 10th term. So we can do it as A10 if we directly use the formula of A plus N minus 1 into D. Then what we'll have then? will be the first term which is minus 1000 from backwards plus n minus 1. So, 10 minus 1 will be 9d and d here is 5. So, that means it should be minus 1000 plus 45 and minus, minus 1000 plus 45 will be minus 955. So, that means option 1 will be the correct option. Okay. Although we have a direct formula of finding the 10th term using the last term, so, you can also use, if you all want to use that formula, you all can use that one. But if you don't remember the that formula with the last term, you can up directly approach it this way as well. That's not a problem. Okay. Now, coming to the next question, that is question number two. As you all see here, they're asking that the nth term of an AP is this. They're just asking for the common difference. Okay. So, as we know that common difference is, if we have any two back to back terms any two consecutive terms we can we can easily have the common difference so let's first find the first term so a1 is going to be so in place of n just simply substitute 1 so it will be 4 into 1 4 so that means the first term is 7 similarly the second term will be how much then 3 plus 4 into 2 so that's 8 that means 11 so d will be what is just the difference a2 minus 7 so that's 11 minus 7 so the answer should be 4 so that means option c will be the correct option okay i think these two questions are quite clear to all of you now moving on to the next questions that we all can see here okay now so we'll go to the next question that is question number three okay let me just slide down it a little bit so that you all can easily see the questions that are following after this okay now we can discuss question number three. Now it says that if the sum of three numbers in an AP is nine and the product is 24, then what will be that particular series? Now always remember that anytime you are getting this type of question that where they are giving you a relation between three consecutive terms or four consecutive terms, then there is a trick of doing, doing this type of questions. If they are asking three consecutive terms, then assume the terms in this way. A minus D, A and A plus D. Assume that these are the three consecutive terms. You can check that the difference of any pair is D only. That is the common difference, right? Now, they have told that the sum of three consecutive terms is 9. So, that means if I add all these, so A minus D plus A plus A plus D, that will be equal to 9. Now, here minus D and plus D will obviously cancel out. So, we have thrice of A equal to 9. 
it gives us the value a equal to 3. So, I already got the first term. Now, what I need to know is the second term. Uh, sorry, I need to know the common difference. So now, they have also told us the product. This product of these three will be what will be a minus d into a plus d into a and that will be equal to 24. Now if I apply the formula of a minus b into a plus b, then this will become what? a square minus d square. a we already know as 3. Now, if I substitute here, so a square will be 9 minus d square and 24 divided by 3 will become 8. So, that means d square will become 9 minus 8 which is 1. So, that means d will be plus minus 1. So, that means you just see such a series where the elements are in a in, uh, having a difference of 1, either 1 or minus 1. So, and if I observe all the four options, then I can only see in the last one this is followed. As you can see that every term is one more than the previous. So, that means this is the correct option. Okay, clear? So, just think about whenever you have this type of question, just follow this particular trick. Moving on next to question number four. Here they are saying that if the P plus Qth term of an AP is M, so that means we can say that A P plus Q will be M, right? And they are also telling that the P minus Qth term is N. They want us to find the pth term. Now, let us write. So, if I use that formula of a plus n minus 1 into d, that nth term formula. So, what I will get in that case? I will be getting a plus p plus q minus 1 into d is equal to m. That is what I should, we should get, right? And for this one, we will be getting a plus p minus q minus 1 into d is equal to n. Now, after that, so we already have two relations now. Now, one thing I think we all are understanding then if they are asking the pth term. So, q is something which we do not want. We want to eliminate q. And if you observe in the first one, q is positive. In the second one, q is negative. So, that means if I add these two relations, then there is a chance that the q will be cancelled. So, that is what we are going to do. Let us just add these two relations. Then we will be getting twice of a. Then we'll be, if I take D common, then inside we'll be getting twice of P, Q plus minus Q will cancel out and minus 1 minus 1 will become minus 2. And on the right side, we'll be having M plus N, right? Now, let's take a 2 common throughout. So, we'll be getting A plus P minus 1 into D and that is equal to M plus N, right? So, that means... Uh, a plus p minus 1 into d that will become m plus n by 2 and if you observe and this is basically the formula of pth term so that means pth term we are getting as m plus n divided by 2 right and we have that option so option number d will be the correct answer okay clear now let's move on to the next one but before that let me just clear the screen and let me just scroll down a little bit so that it becomes easier for all of us. So, till question number 4 we have discussed till now. Next we have question number 5. Yeah. Now, let us see question number 5. Now, here they told us that the nth term of an, of this particular sequence will be what that they are asking. I just observe the terms. The first one is a, second one is a plus d which means the we are adding common difference. That means the common difference is clearly D here. Okay. So that means basically this is just the nth term general term formula. So this is followed A plus N minus 1 into D. Since the first term is A and the common difference is D. So obviously this is the formula that will be followed. So clearly option C is the answer. Next let's move on to question number 6. It says that if the numbers A, B, C, D, E form an AP, then what will be the value of this? Now, this particular type of question, obviously, we are not going to find the values of all these five variables and then we are going to substitute or something, nothing like that. It is going to use the concept of AP, right? For that, what we need to do is since there are five unknowns here, so let us bring every unknown in term of A because A is the first term. So, we can bring all of them, the rest, all four unknowns in terms of A, right? So, if I consider the common difference to be, since D is already used here, so let me consider the common difference to be the cap, to be capital D, right? 
So that means the second term that is B will be A plus D. I can write it in that way. Then the third term which is C, I can write it as A plus twice D. Then the fourth term D will be A plus three times common difference. And similarly, E will be A plus four times common difference, right? Now, just simply substitute these values. So, it will be A minus four. So, B, I will write it as A plus capital D plus six into C, you all substitute as A plus twice capital D minus four into A plus three times capital D plus A plus four times capital D. Now, simply open the brackets. So, we will be having having a minus 4 times a minus 4 times d plus 6 times a plus 12 times d then minus 4a minus 12d plus a plus 4d. Now just concentrate on the terms that you all can cancel right. So we can cancel minus 4d plus 4d then 12d minus 12d will be cancelled. So all d terms are gone. Now just focus on the a terms. First focus on the positive terms. A plus 6a, 7a, 7a plus a, 8a, right. And now focus on the negative terms. So minus 4a, then minus 4a is minus 8a. So it's becoming 0. So the value of this will be 0. So that means option A is the correct one. Okay, clear now? Let's move on to the next one. Next we have is the question number 7. Now here they are told that if the 7 times the 7th term of an AP, so 7 times 7th term, so it will be A7 and that is equal to 11 times the 11th term, so that means A11. They want us to find the 18th term. So let us use the formula directly here. So A7 will be A plus 6D using that formula of A plus N minus 1 into D and this will become A plus 10D, right. Simply evaluate. So it will be 7A plus 42D. That is equal to 11a plus 110d, right? Swap now, just change the sides. Bring everything to one side, preferably on the right. So 11a minus 7a will be 4a. And 110d minus 42d will become 68d and that is equal to 0. Take a 4 common. So it will be a plus 17d is equal to 0. That means a plus 17d is equal to 0 and this is basically A18 and that is what they are asking the 18, 18th term so that means the answer will be 0. So option D will be the correct one. Okay. Now let me just clear the screen a little bit. Okay. Now moving on to the last three questions. Okay. Question number 8 it says that if A, B, C are in AP then A minus B Divided by B minus C will be what? Okay. So, they want us to find A minus B divided by B minus C. Now, if A, B, C are three terms, then obviously B minus A will be the common difference. Okay. So, let me just write it in this way. So, minus 1 and minus 1 we can cancel in the numerator and denominator. So, this is B minus A divided by C minus B. B minus A is clearly the common difference. And in the same way, C minus B is also clearly the common difference. So, it will be 1. So, 1 will be the correct option. Okay, very easy, simple. Moving on to question number 9. They are asking, find the sum of 12 terms of an AP whose nth term is given by AN is equal to 3N plus 4. So, basically, if I want to find the sum, I will obviously use the sum formula. And for that, I need just the common difference and the first term. So, let us find A1, that is the first term. So, it will be 3 into 1, so 3 plus 4, 7. And the second term I am finding just to get the common difference. So, second term will be 3 into 2, 6 plus 4, which is 10. So, common difference will be A2 minus A1, so that is 10 minus 7. So, common difference is 3. Now, just simply apply the sum formula. So, S12 will be, the formula is N divided by 2, so it will be 12 divided by 2 into twice of A. So, twice of A will be twice of 7, so that is 14. Plus n minus 1, so 12 minus 1 is 11 and into d which is 3. So which is 12 divided by 2 is 6. Here we have 14 plus 33. So that will be 6 times. Now 14 plus 33 is 47. And 6 into 47 will be 282. 
that means the correct option is option C. Okay. Now moving on to the last question, question number 10. So it says if P, Q, R and S are in AP, then R minus Q is what? Okay. Now if you observe here, then R and Q are Q and R are consecutive terms. So obviously R minus Q means the common difference. Okay. So that means this will be only equal to any one such pair which also represents the common difference. Clearly S minus P is not, S minus Q is not, S minus R are con consecutive terms and S minus R also means the common difference. So that means the correct option should be option C. Clear? So I hope after seeing these different types of MCQ questions, you all have got quite a very clear idea that what type of question or the national question that you all might get in the MCQ format for the first semester. And I hope that's going to help you a lot for your preparation for the course of for this particular year. So I'm Michael Delta, you all are watching Learning Fanatics, I'll have some more for yourself.